Hey everybody, it's been quite a while since I made a power supply video. Anyways, here we have a dead rose wheel power supply. This is a rose wheel model RV2-600. There's a look at the inputs. I mean the input voltage and output voltages and everything obviously you can see the current ratings and everything pause the view specs so anyways um looking at the chart it's not too bad of a power supply <clears throat> I mean it claims um to have two 12 volt rails at 25 amps a piece now I can tell you right now they are um not calculating this properly because usually those two 12 volt rails do not have a combined power of both of them together. At least that's why I've seen in many units. And of course over here is our 3.3 volt and our 5 volt outputs. Or minus 12 volt output and our plus 5 volt standby output. Now this power supply here has failed on the primary side. When it failed it kicked the breaker. This wasn't my power supply. This is actually um, one that was given to me by one of the students in one of my college courses last semester. And I'm actually with, actually having another class or two with the same person again. I've had this thing for three months. I'm just now making a video about it. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's go ahead and take the cover off and have a look inside. But first, actually, let me go ahead and show you the cables. <clears throat> it's got a bunch of them. It's got a um, it's got an EPS 12 connection which can split into two pieces for an ATX 12 volt connection, the four pin style. We have a 20 plus four pin connection. Wiring is pretty decent on this thing. I mean, yeah, the wiring is not very thin. <clears throat> we have two video card connections here, one six pin and one six plus two. Make eight pin. So it appears we have two video card video card connections, plenty of SATA connections, MOS connections, and probably got a floppy disk connection somewhere in the bunch. Yep, there's a floppy disk connector. So now let's go ahead and open it up and have a look inside. <clears throat> now the burnt smell has long gone out of this thing. When I received it, it smelled very bad. It smelled horrible. And you can tell it's kind of a lower end power supply and doesn't have active PFC. Normally, mid range to high end power supplies nowadays, and many of the lower end power supplies have active PFC. This has none. <clears throat> so no power factor correction at all. It has the old style um, voltage doubler circuit that operates when you're using power supply 115 volts. No, 120 volts, better yet. <clears throat> And the cover is fitted on here very good. Hard to get off. Not the easiest thing to get off. So, bear with me. Apparently the fan is causing some of the problems here. Gonna loosen the fan up a little bit. That's exactly what's causing the problems. Guys, I don't think I've ever seen this before. It's where you had to loosen the um, cooling fan to get the cover to come loose. 
I've never seen this before. It's kind of ridiculous if you ask me. Now it comes loose. <clears throat> and of course it's already unplugged to begin with. Yeah, I had to take um had to take two screws out of the out of the fan to make it come loose from the cover. Um, yeah, make the cover come loose from the rest of the unit. <clears throat> now let's have that look inside. Yeah, let me grab my flashlight so I can shine all the light on the primary side because you definitely gonna want to see that. I think we even got a couple of burnt resistors in there too. This thing fried up pretty good. There is that cooked resistor. Let me go ahead and try to get you a good focus here. You will see what a burnt resistor looks like. Look right in the center of the video, you'll see one. I believe what has happened here is one of those switching transistors have shorted, causing a chain reaction of other sorts of failures. Like I mentioned earlier, um, <clears throat> the owner stated that when his power supply failed, it kicked the um, main circuit breaker in the man's home. <clears throat> yeah, that guy has a lot of current. Because you got to think about it. Many homes out there, the circuit breakers for a particular room or whatever, are usually about 15 amps. This power supply does have a fuse. It's right there. I may have to test that fuse, see if it's good or not. Hopefully it's not good. Hopefully it actually um, worked, but according to what the man said, apparently the fuse did not do its job. Okay, test the fuse and multimeter, and despite the fact that this power supply kicked the um, main circuit breaker in the house, that fuse is still good. I think what has happened here is one of those switching transistors have shorted. There's two in there. So I'm guessing maybe um, it uses a design that's what I believe is called a two transistor four design. Now I feel it was a half bridge you'd see a big red capacitor somewhere back in this area. But I believe when it's a two transistor Ford, it has the two transistors like this on your primary side. And this power supply uses an IC controlled 5 volt standby rail. There's no third transistor on that circuit, and you can sit on this heatsink, and you can see the little 8 pin integrated circuit on the board. And usually, those 8 pin circuits in this area are one thing they'll commonly do is. Um, work the 5 volt standby rail. Now in terms of capacitors, this thing does not have very good caps in it. From brands that, I mean, this brand I never heard of before. FHY or FI, I guess that's how you pronounce them. It's, um, they're rated for 1200 microfarads. Pretty big capacitors. And uh, when you put them together in this kind of uh, circuit, you get half the capacitance, which would be 600 microfarads, which still is not too bad. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of active PSC units have a single capacitor. Well, most of them have a single capacitor. That's usually ran for 330 microfarads or something like that. Or sometimes up to 400 something. But um, this, this power supply here has two 1200s to get. When you put them together, it's 600. Now, let's go ahead and continue looking through this thing. Decent sized transformers. You get your main transformer there and your 5 volt standby transformer there. And for feedback, we have optocouplers instead of a third transformer. This thing has a good size secondary heatsink. Got some beef to it. And the fan is thermally controlled, as you can see by the thermistor right there. So this thing does have a fan control circuit. And for um, secondary side capacitors and capacitors in the center, they're pretty much all Asia, Asia X, which is not a good brand. Those do tend to fail. I made the mistake one time of reusing some in a power supply, and that lasted, I think they lasted a year before they started to bulge. One started to bulge, so obviously they are starting to fail. 
So you don't want to use Asia X caps, and if you find some, you definitely want to change those out. Now, none of these have failed, so these may last for another good while. It also depends on how hot the power supply runs. Anyways, um, appears to be all Asia X. And here we have another um, IC, which is probably both a um, controller and a supervisor IC. It monitors everything. This is a, um, the top number is a PS222F. The bottom number is, um, bottom code is A03825B2F, if you want to look that up for a data sheet. Anyways, um, I'm not going to tear this thing apart right now because I may try to fix it later on. Because, um, I'm currently in a um, course right now in college that's about to start um, focusing on transistors. So I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once I learn a bit more about transistors, I'm going to test those, see if they are good or not. I think one of them is shorted. Because um, if you see the resistor um, right there, if you can see, right dead center next to the inductor, right next to the big capacitor, that resistor looks fine. And I'm um, trying to see if they are the same value, just looking at the, co at the color codes on the two. Not really sure because one's burnt up, you can't really see the color codes on it, but um anyways, um I believe what's happened here again, I'll say it again, is I believe this transistor, the one closest to the front, or back side unit if you want to call it that, I believe it's short circuited. And um that's a that's a pretty common type of primary side failure. Now the transistor has not exploded, it's still intact in one piece so there's really no telling but of course I'll have to test that later on now before I wrap this video up let me go ahead and um, show you the, prim the um, primary input stage the um, EMI filtering stage I meant to show you that earlier it appears to be complete in this power supply at the AC plug we have an X capacitor there we have two Y caps here now, of course, it could be better. I can't really say it's 100% complete because it could be a little bit better. But um, we do have two small Y capacitors right there. We have two X capacitors here. So three X capacitors, definitely up to par on that. And, of course, also in um, input um, filtering chokes, also known as inductors. It's got two of those. That's what you're supposed to have is at least two. And of course, there's a fuse, and there's a rectifier bridge. Now, of course, yeah, I got the video upside down, so sorry about that. But um, there's a bridge rectifier, and all the markings are on the back side of it. Normally, the markings are on the front side. Kind of strange. So let me go ahead and um, see if I can find out what this says. Appears to be an 8 amp re um, bridge rectifier. Now, I'm not sure if that rating is for when the rectifier is heat synced or not, but um, this thing clearly can take a heat sink. There's a hole available for a screw to pass through to bolt the thing to a heat sink. But um, behind that, we have our NT th NTC thermistor, which is for inrush current limiting. And we also have surge protection two MOVs, one on this side and one on that side. So we have what appears to me to be a complete EMI filtering stage which is definitely good there now if this thing had some slightly better um, had some good quality caps this would be a pretty decent unit for what it is but of course it is a value unit so I guess they didn't do too awful bad with um, with the design on this thing but um, then again for this thing to fail and take out the break take out the breaker um, when it failed, that's kind of crazy. Now I'm going. I never did ask the owner if his computer was okay, because the last time um, when I got this power supply from him, he was still waiting on his new power supply to arrive. I'll need to ask him about that and see if his computer's still okay after he replaces power supply. And what I'll do is I'll add an annotation or update description on this video to let you guys know. But anyways, um. It's been a while since I posted a um, pretty good power supply review to Q Computer Channel. 
But anyways, any questions or comments, feel free to ask and thanks for watching.